Howdy, folks. So uh, I'm Dylan. I work with the Wall Street Journal uh, graphics department, um, making pretty much any visual you can kind of imagine. And most of my coworkers probably wouldn't consider themselves cartographers by trade, but pretty much everyone in our field kind of wears many similar hats to what everyone here does, where depending on the weather, you could be making a graphic that's a drawing or making a little map or making a chart or what have you. You could be developing, you could be wrangling data. Uh, and I kind of love the news graphics in particular because we kind of feel a little unique in that we don't usually work too much on uh, client-based long-term projects, but rather kind of breaking new stuff, which can involve kind of very fresh data that might not be polished, uh, might be kind of really bizarre in a PDF format, et cetera. Um, and we also have to work pretty fast, depending on what the news cycle kind of calls for. Also, if anyone wants to follow along to this presentation, uh, I have tweeted out a link to it, and it's the bit.ly link down there will also take you to it uh, if you're not having Wi-Fi problems. Uh, so a lot of the tasks that we kind of do, sometimes they can be kind of similar. So to kind of work faster, one thing I've really dug into over the last couple of years has been kind of automating the processes as much as possible. So I can spend less time kind of in QGIS just getting things projected correctly and more time kind of designing it or coming up with the pie in the sky kind of projects. Uh, so before I kind of get into the command line stuff, I just want to do some caveats that it's not a cure-all by any means. Like sometimes opening up Photoshop or QGIS and Illustrator, right way to go. And depending on, like it can be less productive for you if you're doing like a one-off task. Like let's say you're doing a quick little locator thing. Maybe in that case, yeah, just getting the thing out in two hours, more important. Um, and then also like if you're working on deadline, trying to learn these kind of things or trying out a new language, probably not ideal. And there's also, as we've kind of already seen, and I think we're going to see with a couple other presentations and looking very much forward to, uh, I write with make files, but like uh, Pi is, uh, you can pretty much apply this stuff for plenty of different other languages. Python or R seem pretty capable, um, JavaScript as well. So when I'm talking about command line uh, interface tools, uh, you can kind of think of this instead of opening up QGIS or interface, uh, talking directly to the computer. In this case, you can't just say like, hey, do this thing for me and make it explicit because it won't understand what that means. If you say like, hey, project this thing, it'll just go, ah, buffer data, mm, not as much. Even if you ask very nicely, a uh, computer will unfortunately not be able to understand you. So you have to install a library or write in an, its own native language for it to understand you. And so the first little tutorial I've written on my blog, which is moriartynaps.org, uh, follow that link for it, kind of covers how to type in this language and how to talk to it, as well as covering like MapShaper and downloading files from online and getting them locally placed. And so I'm going to spend the rest of the presentation kind of talking about a couple examples at uh, WSJ and just personal projects where I've kind of found these very useful for them. And this approach really shines with uh, consistency in that every time you run a command, uh, it's going to work the exact same way because you've written it that way. So your inputs are always going to come out the same output depending on your data. Also, once it is written, it's lightning fast. It's wonderful. And you also have an exact record of your workflow uh, for, like, let's say you come back to a project six months later. You can be, oh, wait, how much did I simplify that geography by? Oh, cool, I've got it written. So the first example is a uh, project we released a couple of weeks ago um, showing the measles vaccination rates for elementary schools and kindergartens all across the states. And the data handling for this was an absolute beast uh, because each of the states, while they are supposed to have this data, they all kind of put it together in slightly different ways. Uh, Depending on which state we're looking at, some of them wouldn't school, include the school type, some of them wouldn't uh, include the school city. Uh, the abbreviations would be different. It was just uh, a lot of work went into uh, getting them all consistent so we could kind of kick it into a map at the end. Um, this is probably too small for you to read, uh, but again, if you look at the presentation, I include this not to like intimidate anyone, and I hope it isn't, um, but rather so if anyone is curious after the fact, you can kind of dig into it. But this is effectively a series of uh, terminal tasks that I have written in a file uh, that I can reference and pull out. I save it to a file just because it's a little easier than entering one by one into a terminal. Um, when I'm talking about a make file, that's kind of what that means. And that 
uh, I'm assigning uh, the various tasks you would usually put in the terminal to a file and kind of creating a little code word between me and the computer. And just to kind of show you an example of how fast this is, and thankfully this doesn't rely on Wi-Fi. Um, I can do make batch. So this is taking each of the CSVs for each of the states that provided this data and doing all the GIS work for me effectively. And it will, should be done in like less than a minute effectively. Um, so this came in huge handy for this project in particular because we reached out to every state individually, but not all of them got back to us right away. Uh, up until publication, like <laughs> we were still receiving new data from new states. So by kind of having this process uh, pre-written for me, I can drop in a new state as long as it's formatted the same way, it'll execute uh, all the GIS work the exact same way. So on the bottom here, I've got a file that is all those dots, and then it kicks out into Mapbox tiles eventually that are uh, geo-referenced as well. This is also the, the um, process I used for a little red panda map I put together a couple weeks ago for International Red Panda Day. I found a database on GitHub for where uh, red pandas are located, and it's not complete by their admission. For example, like Africa, there should be some in like Johannesburg, I believe. Um, but when they do update that data, I'll be able to do a very similar thing, just update this and be on my merry way. This can also shine with kind of mixing and matching different types of codes. So um, in this case, uh, kind of inspired by Joshua Stevens' stuff from last year, uh, one thing we kind of cover quite a bit is weather-related uh, events. And I'm sure as you've probably all kind of seen a lot of the no provided graphics, which are you know, lovely in their own right. But for our cases, we really want to be able to use our own style. So we want to be able to use the raw data. And that can be kind of a pain to use. Uh, it's all in Grib2 files, kind of located on a mystery server somewhere. Um, and so if, if, to be able to execute on these pretty fast, I've written a bunch of little uh, commands that will take these files and kick them into GIFs that look like the left one here. This is actually from last week, I think, which put together in a little less than a day, uh, showing the California wind gust speeds for that. And this is kind of an example of what this one looks like. Again, like if someone wants to kind of look at it later and dig into it, find mistakes, uh, let me know. But you can kind of see on the left, this is what each of those tasks is individually doing. So we take like the original uh, raster data, convert it uh, via color scale, put our lines work on top of it, address it out. And then finally, it uses image magic uh, to combine them all into a GIF, which is what gives us a little animation at the end. And the other fun thing about this kind of work is that when you mess up, it creates really cool errors, like this. <laughs> if anyone knows David Lynch, let me know. Like, I, I want to put this in Twin Peaks season four. And then finally, like memory. Uh, I was actually really happy to see Leland Brown is branding for me, because this is something I was looking into, I think back in January, was how to use his text, uh, terrain texture uh, tools via the command line. And so I wrote this to be able to do that, uh, I think, yeah, back in January. And I don't think I could probably do it without the PDF, and it would probably take me another 20 minutes to replicate it, but I don't have to because I have it written. So I can just change my input, maybe change the projection, and maybe one or two other features, and be on my merry way between uh, taking the DEM to that. So if you kind of want to know about the make files and that, kind of composition. I've got a second tutorial, part two, which covers kind of text editors, make files, variables in that, and kind of bringing in a couple other libraries as you might want. And then I'm working on a third one, which probably out in November, which will cover kind of batch editing. So what I was doing with the measles data there, where it's going through each file individually and performing an operation on it, working with Jira rasters for the weather data stuff, and incorporating Node, probably Python too. Um, for other resources, every year at PCD there's been a talk on this stuff, which is exciting. Back in 2016, uh, Seth Fitzsimmons blitzed a talk on make commands. I don't recommend that one unless you have looked into it a little bit beforehand, just so you can kind of follow along better. Uh, Matthew Block from the New York Times did a wonderful MapShaper mini workshop 2017, and Joshua Stevens uh, did one last year as well. Uh, so thank you.